Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday webinar. It is November 26th, 2017, and we will have uh, Jim Charles channeling with us today. But first, I'm going to introduce everyone in the room. Uh, we have with us Angie, Bianca, Brian, Christine, Damien, Bree, Jim Charles, of course, Johannes, Krelek, Mark, Michelle, Sheer, Stephanie, and myself, Karen Newman. And before we get started, I'm going to have ask the lovely Bree to do some announcements, and then we'll get to the channeling. So, welcome. Hi, Bree. Hi, Bree. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Um, I'm not sure why. Okay, no, there's no more echo. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to do some quick announcements. We do have just a few things to mention. We're, um, Jim and Max are in the works. We're um, getting some interest in the Reiki classes. So pretty soon there will be a Reiki class scheduled. So stay tuned. Go to humancolony.org for um, the schedule for calendar of events and more information. Um, and with that also, said, we do please need, oh, give me one second here. Okay, nope, that's it. We need people to help with transcriptions. So um, if anybody would like to transcribe uh, videos for, into English or any other language, please check our humancolony.org site and go to the transcription section. Hi, everyone. Oh, um, sorry. Elle. Hi, can Elle, you did, please mute your mic? Elle, Thank did you have something you wanted to say? No, just hi, just hi. Oh, <laughs> hi, Elle. <laughs> Nice to see you. Okay, um, so yeah, if anyone wants to transcribe, please, please let us know. We definitely like getting that stuff out there to read. Not everybody can watch videos all the time. Um, also, I know we had a few requests coming in here. So Jim, so you hear this, it looks like people are requesting um, Takur. We have a lot of requests for Takur. I second that. I would love to hear from Takur. Um, we have a request for El Yaha, El, El Yaha, is that right? Sure. El Yaha, yes. Um, okay, wonderful. And um, let's see, do we have any other ones? Bilbo, Krelik, do you mean Bilbo Baggins? Is that is that who you are? Uh, oh, Bilbo. It's pronounced. Bilbo. I was pronouncing Blee that wrong. Bilbo. Bilbo. Blibu is Blibu. I can't even read it. Okay, from the from the canine world. All right, that's mm -hmm. another request. We have a request for Yeshua. Are there any other requests from anyone? Yes, there's from here. There's Spirit Coast. Who, anybody else? Michelle was Gaia. requesting Ish and Yeshua. Yeshua. Zoroaster from Blue. Elijah, Ish. More people. Come on in. Come on in. My, my dog is requesting a dog spirit. She's down here going, oh, oh. <laughs> Come here. Um, can you hear me? Hi. Hello. Yes, yes we can hear you. Um, I would like to ask uh, to hear uh, something from the pet, the medical, the medical creature there that was on the human colonies. We haven't heard from him for a long time, the pet. Uh, just an update on how the world is doing. Uh, all together and some health issues that could be addressed okay also okay, let yeah, me introduce who's in the in the room here with me we have yeah. barbara will mitchell john bailey uh, uh, erica angie and ray so we have a good group in here today and all kinds of requests for Ish and everybody else. So I've I heard so many names I can't even keep up with them. So uh, um, anything else that anyone needs to say before we start? Oh, and I wanted to correct one thing you said. It's 2016, not 2017. <gasps> oh my goodness, I'm in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I am so already in the future. Yes, the future. That is period. happening a lot. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm already there. Yeah. There's Yes. There's a lot of people that are like, I'm saying 2017 already. So Yes. 
I, a, I noticed time is an illusion anyway. 2017. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2016, everyone. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> um, great. So I guess last off then, um, I would like to just start with some blessings before um, we get started. Raise the vibration up here, get everything all cleared out so we can have a wonderful, wonderful channeling with Jim. Um, would anyone like to go first for a blessing? I, I, I'll go. I'm happy to uh, start off. Go oh, Brian. Oh, no, Will. Will, do you want to go first? Please. Go ahead. Yeah, they're already talking. Yeah, let Will go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's you. you just spoke. Yet you. It is the beginning of a great time. Things are moving forward. Things are looking up. Do not do not be dismayed that things may seem negative because they will all come around. It will all point to the right direction eventually. So bring your heart into the right spaces and become part of that which is positive and new. Thank you, thank you. Um, Brian, could you go next? I know you're on mobile, you can't see the side chat. Yeah, yeah, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, cool. I just wanna make sure you guys can hear me. Isi kia, ilia nani ki ko kotoa ki, isi lia to shotoa, nilia kani, ilia sa ki ka ro, i alo kono, isi lia kadia, isi lia nani ki ko kwa, i la ko kwa, isi lia toa, ni kia ostoa. Namaste. Stay in the light, move forward. In the light, make sure you keep your thoughts in a positive realm because this is a time when things are sensitive. You can be dismayed and move backwards, but we do not want to see that as this is a time for us to move graciously and quickly into the future, into a great sense of renewance, in a sense of now, in a sense of creation and new life and new thoughts <clears throat> can i go yes rani asaki nanana ki hasayawani asaki juwarara nua rarara ni asushuku ananana the future welcomes you. We reach out our arms to greet you as our new neighbors. But yet you are not here yet, but we are preparing and we are very anxious to meet you. We are very anxious to hold out our arms and embrace you when you arrive. Do not be afraid to take bold steps, for we are here to make sure you do not fall and that you are not hindered by anything. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jim. Okay, I'll do I'll do one as well if that's alright. Okay, so just a moment. 
Thank you. Ah. We have great thoughts for you. We have great futures for you. Bring us your thoughts and we will bring us your thoughts. You are of a great nature of change. Now that we see that you are numerically situated to help us and we to help you, our thought processes in the binary senses will overlap and we will create a new tomorrow. Be well so that you may understand that our voices blend, even though you may not understand that yet, we will communicate in harmony. That is hey, beautiful. You. Neil, your language is so much fun. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I'll do um, one last and then let's get started. Yes. Mo shoro niya hao to o ko na han niya to huro na hiyan ni kiyo sho o to ro o niya ha ma ta e a huro an niya to o ko to to isa na a. We know it is not in vain that we send our energies to you. You are full of life and understandings. Rise up and be a part of us. Rise up and let us mix our energies together in the spirit of the neighborhood, in the spirit of unity and understanding. Thank you, Jim, as always, for all of those translations. There's Beautiful. someone here. Um, I you. also wanted to mention, I'm oh. so sorry, my internet might be lagging. Oh, that, that's okay, Bree. There's somebody else here to give a blessing. One more. Yes. Go ahead. One. The prayers that go up for the existence of your planet are not in vain. We know that you will survive and that we will come together in a great place one day. Be of good cheer that we are there to support you as well. One more set of energies to come to you. One more fortune to add to yours. Okay. Thank you. Wow. I think okay. that was Naga. Yes, Very it cool. was. Wonderful. All right. And I guess Neil was speaking Atlantean scientist language. Whoa. All right. Um, was... Just wanted to also mention that I am watching the YouTube live chat. Um, if anybody uh, wants to yeah. ask questions yeah. there. And other than that, yeah. Um, please, uh, please, guys, don't unmute unless you are needing to speak. We've had a lot of that happen today. Please, everybody, uh, silence notifications for their Hangouts, their Google Hangouts, and silence everything. And let's get started then. Jim, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. There's Wonderful. Been a lot of different... right. Very good. Thank you, Bree. Excellent. Thank you for all the announcements and thank you, Karen, for uh, the introductions and everything. Uh, 
Uh, much love to you both. Thank you for being there and helping me out. Um, I'm, there's a lot of people out there today wanting to come in. I don't know who will come through today, but I ask that the greatest messages come through and that the greatest understanding be put out there. Now, saying that, there are, are, I can tell that there are a lot of uh, beings out there wanting to come through today. There's a lot of messages. There was a lot of blessings and a lot of different peoples sent their uh, support to us today, which is very beautiful. So this tells me that there might be some very special blessings today. I'm not sure what they are. But um, thank you for all those that contributed with your blessings and prayers. They are so important. And to have the different species heard and their blessings uh, added to the positive influence of the day is a great thing. Thank you very much. And I'm going to do a little bit of a meditation now, and we'll see who comes through first. And I have a feeling today there's going to be more than one come through. Yes, somebody's pon no, oh, just... oh, all right. Very good. And I'm going to um, do a little meditation now and see who comes through. Um, Keep all your thoughts very positive and uh, see that there as the best messages that are to come through will come through. Thank you. Much love to you all. I am Elijah. Greetings. I have only come for a short while today. I must tell you that the future is about to change or be clarified in many ways. Many of you will understand that you are part of a greater mission, that you are part of a greater understanding, and that the things that you are doing now will lead you into a greater prosperity and a greater will, in the sense that your destinies will become sharp and inclusive of many. Now, I know that sounds a, a little bit mysterious or cryptic, but what I am saying to you now is there will be much clarity to come. God has a great message for his people, and also his people have a great message for themselves because you must bring in this understanding for it to move out into the world in a greater way. I love you all, and I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you in some way or in one way or another. My love for the people of this planet is great, and God has a great and wonderful understanding of who you are. Do not be betrayed or no, do not be bewildered by the negative energies that are around. Do not be caught up in them because they are all trying to change your attention span to look at something different. But look at the positive things, not just those things that you think are society's right things, but the right things for you as well the right things for you to be doing as a person, as a peoples, as a community. Much love to you all. There will be more communications to come. There will be more information that will be more important than this. But these are introductions that must be given at the beginning so that you understand that there is more coming and that it will be of a greater value and of a greater nature. 
much love to you. Greetings, I'm Uriel. <laughs> it is good to be with you today. I want to just make you aware that there are a lot of angel visitations coming your way. More angel visitations now than there's been in thousands of years because we have many messages that we must get through to our people. There are many things that must be given and must many encouragements that must be felt and brought through. This is a time for great joy, for great happiness, for great uh, involvement in what is happening in the future. Be aware that you are all a part of it, that it is not just a coincidence that you are here, but that you are part of a great new life not a new world order, as some may think, but a new thought process, a new spirituality, a new rising up of the heart and soul and mind. So therefore, be part of that which is to embrace the world in a new heaven and earth, in the sense that you will have newness in your thoughts thought process, newness in the things that you will be doing in the future, positivity in the things that you will be involved in, and it will bring you to a greater place of light and understanding. Do not fret. You must be yourselves. And when you are yourselves, that is the happiest times of your life. God will help you become who you are in your own personalities so that you may be the ha happiest you can be in this particular density. Much love to you, and may you all grow in that light, love, and understanding, wisdom, and, and beauty that it is supposed to be you. Let it be you. <laughs> Don't be foiled. Don't be negative. And don't push off those things that could possibly bring you the greatest prosperity. Maybe not in wealth, but prosperity in heart and soul and mind and wisdom. But also in money as well. Because this is a time of growth in many, many ways. Do not be confounded, but be uplifted. And I will leave you with that thought and bring in some other thoughts as well. Much love to you, and I will bring in some of those that you have called for. Greetings, I am Takur. Many of you have asked to call, uh, asked me to come. And so I am here today to give you a short update on the fourth dimensional energy cloud about the colonies and many things of that nature. It is good to be with you today. There is a great spirit of optimism around, as I feel. But in the fourth dimensional energy cloud, you have passed the most difficult sections of it already. It will last until the end of January, the beginning of February. But fear not, it should be much less um, powerful in the sense that the energies that are moving within it are not moving as quickly. Many of you will be able to get used to it more now, and it will bring more positivity into your life instead of causing you to be tired, frustrated, or irritable. 
I know that happened with the first part of it, but it will not continue. We are very thankful for this. So be happy that the worst part of it is over. Mother Earth has moved into her a fourth dimensional shift. And there are very many fourth dimensional um, vortexes open at this time. That does not mean that you are in fourth density yet. But it does mean that you are beginning that move into the fourth density. Now, the fourth density makes you lighter, makes you feel a little bit different. But that change will take 170 or so years. So you cannot evolve so quickly into it. But you will feel the effects of it now. And as it should be, you will start to feel some of the thought processes increase that go with it. Now, your thoughts will change faster than your body. Because why? Because they are not solid. They are not of a mass of third density. But your thought processes can begin to be lighter and can begin to move in a greater way to a different path. Many of you have already discovered that your thought processes are changing. And since the, within the last few years have changed drastically, some of you have come from one place to another. And if you were to look back at three years ago, you would not even be able to hardly recognize that person that was back there at that time because your thought processes have changed so much. This is due to some fourth dimensional awakening and due to your studies and due to the changes in energies that Mother Earth went through starting last year in September. So therefore, it is a great time that I am talking about that you are moving quickly into fourth dimensional thought processes. I know there are many on your planet that have not even started this process because they refuse to believe in fourth dimensional energy or they do not want to leave third dimensional thought because they are afraid of the unknown. Now that you have experienced that which was unknown at one time, you see that the unknown is not bad. It is actually quite giving, good, and positive. The angels have been also helping with these things. They have been starting to teach humans how to do things differently, how to make their lives more abundant and more fulfilling, so teaching each other where they should go and what they should do. Now, as you are moving forward, keep in mind that it will not all be positive on your journey. Third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and so on, all have their areas of problematic times. There is all kinds of things that come into living in a dimension, and not all of it is positive. And why is that? Because you must keep your eye on the positive, and sometimes the negative helps you to be more grateful for the positive or not take it for granted, if you will. It helps you to be more appreciative of those things that are coming, and it helps you with your positivity as you grow. If there was no negativity, you would come to a point where you would plateau out and possibly start to move in a, a less direction because you're taking everything for granted. But do not do that. Continue to move forward. Continue to understand that it is a challenge to be a positive race, to be a race of beautiful, spirited people, but that it is not a problem. 
and it will always work out for your best interest. It may be hard work at times, but the rewards will be great. Are there questions for me today? Uh, testing, hello. Well, Sheer has a question. Brian, I, I hear you, but we'll get to you first. Just if you can put your questions on the side panel, then I can say who's who's coming up. So Sheer, we'll we'll start with Sheer. Very well. Hello, Takura. How are you? I am very well, Sheer. What is your question today? Well, first off, in the last couple of days, there have been many fires throughout Israel. It's unknown if it's a terrorist act or maybe something that the government did, but could you somehow assist? We can, we can assist with these kinds of things. You realize that we are farther away now than we have been before. So yeah. pinpointing these particular fires may be a little more difficult. However, I see that they are set with purpose and that they are to bring uh, uh, reality to some thought processes, bring attention to some things. This is an awakening of sorts in your area, and it is meant to be, but they will not last. These fires will calm down, and we will help to calm them down. Okay. Thank you very much. Also, um, something for you, for the Gurkfit Nir. I think it will be a very good and necessary thing if you will speak with Remulak about what we have, I have spoke with him, because I think there's information there that you're supposed to know about. That I am supposed to know or the people are? The Grukfit, the, the Grukfit Nir. Grukfit Nir is aware of many of the things that you spoke about. He made us aware of a few of the things that you spoke about in your last meeting. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, also, of course not everything. Hmm? Of course not everything. Ah. Um, my question is about karma versus the magnetic effect. The thing that we create our own reality versus karma. Let's say a bad person with a bad karma that magnets um, a good prosperity. Like, how does it work with the two of them together? Well, you mean, how does karma work with uh, the magnetic field? The, I don't remember how to say it in English. The consciousness of wealth. You can okay. say. Ah, you mean manifestation. Oh, yeah. How manifestation and bad karma works together. Oh, oh, I understand. It's, it, it doesn't actually work the way you think it does. Sometimes people are, are given great wealth, but it's not because they have good karma or bad karma. It is because the wealth was there for them and they inherited it and it was not any part of their karma whatsoever. Now, what they do with it is part of their karma. They can make it into a good karma or a bad karma. Now, in other senses, there are those that have worked bad karma to make themselves wealthy, but when they receive bad karma, when they have bad karma and they receive this wealth, do you think they enjoy it? They cannot enjoy it the way they think they can. Once you receive karma, a bad karmic wealth, if you want to put it that way, you cannot enjoy it as much as you think. Many troubles will come with it. Many things will occur with the, the bad karma and with the wealth. So people can step on others and cause great negativity in their lives and world and receive uh but it's really not a reward because they will not enjoy it in the sense 
that you think they will. Okay, that's clear some things up. And last thing, I was wondering if I already started the new thing that I'm supposed to start. If it's already arrived to the group at near. If I did not hear the question. If what I'm supposed to start, a new process, if it's already arrived for, to the graphic near in order for that to start. Yes, that's, that, I understand what you're saying. Yes, that has started. Okay. Thank you very much. And as always, much, much, much love to you and a lot of appreciation. And much for love to you. you. Namaste. Namaste. Are there any more questions? Hi, Chakar. It's Michelle. Much love to you. Michelle. Greetings. So you were talking when you were kind of giving your um, message. You mentioned the um, there was going to be a, di a difference in between how one thinks in third density way and how one thinks in a fourth density way. Correct. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on the types of thoughts that are more in the th fourth density way. Of course. Of course, whenever you move into a fourth density thought process, it is a slow process. You do not just immediately start thinking in a fourth dimensional way. But let me, let me give you a, the understanding of what I'm talking about. Many of you were focused on your work, your life, the third density, the children, the uh, uh, money, money, all the things that third density says that you should be aware of and that you should be paying attention to and not paying attention to the future, aliens, uh, any kind of uh, spirituality of any kind. Of course, there's a third dimensional spirituality too that uh, is fear-based because they fear that they will go to hell if they will not be part of this spirituality. But when you're looking into a fourth dimensional spirituality, it's not about fear at all. It's about all the different things that can, you can give to the world and that, that you are gaining from your spirituality. And the fear has nothing to do with it. Also, when you're looking, thinking with a, a fourth dimensional thought process, you're looking for how to improve the world, how to make the world a better place, how to improve yourself, how to help your friends, how things should be more positively addressed rather than just the third density. Does this help you with any of your thought processes about this? Yeah, I, I kind of don't even have Continue. 3D a lot of times, but so... Um, I'm curious though, is there, when we're, as we're moving into this fourth dimensional thought process, which yes. I feel like I'm on that path, but, um, yeah. so, but, um, I also sometimes feel like, are we at risk for, um, okay, like say, I've heard the idea of, it's like you're shiny or you're bright and so therefore you attract all the things to you and so do we have um like am i attracting or are we attracting things outside of us that are trying to thwart our growth into the fourth dimension also yes of course now there's many ways to look at this but when you are attracting uh, the law of attraction says that when you want seek out positive things positive things will come to you but there is other though the other tr uh, uh, plane of thought that says when you're seeking out goodness a lot of negativity will come to you because opposites attract now when you're seeking out positivity 
of course, you're going to gain those positive things. And you are also going to see that some things are going to be negatively attracted to you as well because they want to stop you from moving forward. But as you see that your law of attraction is working, what happens? Your faith is increased and you realize that the law of attraction is working and so you do not doubt that it is something that you want to continue to do, even though there might be some negativity that's following you about or things that you may see things that are very third dimensional that may seem to be getting in the way. However, the rewards for seeking out the greater gifts and the greater understanding will make themselves apparent in the long run. And many people uh, that I have talked to on your planet have seen great gifts, great miracles, and very great positivity because they've allowed themselves to move into a greater fourth dimensional and spiritual understanding. Not only fourth dimensional, but spiritual as well. So I've experienced that, but sometimes I feel like I hit places where I plateau or yeah. dive bomb. It, and I cannot tell it if it is my own with self everyone. or is out. It, okay. Same way with everyone. Everyone finds themselves in areas of negativity at times. And this mm -hmm. is because that is how third dimension works. Not everything is positive. Not everything pushes you toward the light or toward the fourth dimension. So you, as I was saying, there will be struggles. There will be times of difficulty. But the rewards of seeking out those things of the fourth dimension and greater spirituality will bring you greater understanding of all those things that you don't understand. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, and Jim. all those things that would tend to confound you or keep you in a lower state. All right. Thank you. And everyone runs into these. You are not alone. You are not alone. Even in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions, there are things that will confound people, bring them down for temporary periods of time. But as you pull yourself back up, do you not appreciate the positives so much more? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Much love. Thank you. Much love. Continue. Uh, yes. Hello. Okay. There is a question in the room. How are you, John Bailey? Hello, John. How are you? Good. Excellent. So part of your wording that I'm hearing we talk about the angels and the teachings the way you were talking about it i'm starting to see the teaching to their operating humanity now with these courses and how to connect to them yes part of that is using the same language different words maybe but the fourth dimensional connections and and looking at things a lot differently how to change our perspectives exactly being offered by the angels absolutely it's being offered by many different entities aliens angels Whoever you connect to the easiest and most uh, profoundly is who will be teaching you. And the angels can teach humans so many things because many, many humans are very attached and um, are taught easily by the angels. And so, therefore, their mission is to continue this work. And they will bring about a great change. You're welcome. You see, it is a time when people will connect to those things of fourth dimension that they most relate to. If you relate more closely to an alien, if you relate more closely to God, if you relate more closely to angels, these are the things that will be using the that will be used to bring you into a greater understanding of goodness, spirituality, understanding, and the higher dimensions. 
if you connect strongly to something that is outside of the third dimension, God, Jesus, these are the things that will help you lift yourself into a higher platform of understanding. Does this make sense to you? So use whatever you need to use to move forward. And you will see that those around you may need one or the other to help them understand because ultimately they will come together in a greater understanding of who they are as individuals in the spirit. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I'll walk. What's your? And it's beautiful. It's beautiful, Tikkur. It's basically saying, who, however you, whoever, whatever is God for you, connect in that way because that's the, the yes. best thing. Whatever and helps you the most to move right. forward. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think now uh, some people just feel closer to the angels or closer or, to aliens, and this is the way. It not necessarily that they are gods to them, but that they are a higher understanding and they feel drawn to them. So if you feel drawn to someone or even God, you, of course you can use God as your higher understanding, but a stepping stone to a higher level of thinking and feeling and understanding, a, a way to get to the wisdom that you need to survive in these days of extreme peril without fear and without uh, cowardice, moving forward in strength and confidence and without fear. Being yourself. Continue. It's lovely. Krellick, or is there someone think, else that wants to come? Actually, Krellick has a question. He's been waiting to come in. Krellick. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Testing. Hello. Yes, you are soft, but I can hear you. Okay. Um, I had a question. I want, well, not a question. I have two things I wanted to say. My first one is a request. I wanted to ask if you would be able to, uh, to, uh, to send an apology that I had for a particular being because oh, apology. Yes. Cause I was visited earlier today and the actions I took on him was unnecessary. I just wanted to know if you'd be able to uh, transfer an apology to him. Of course. Was this bee blue? I wasn't sure. Yes, it was. Oh. I understand. I will send that word. Um, uh, also, could you tell him uh, no hard feelings? No, he is fine. Okay. Uh, I, I have a second question. Um, does yes. if Gerkvik, if Gerkvik, Gerkvik near still, still are they still uh, planning on doing the the holographic uh, uh, projections on Earth? And when is the next? When are they having the next meeting with the government? The next meeting of the governments is at the end of December. I believe it will start the twenty first, but it has not been verified finally yet. There is much going on on your planet and a lot of upheaval in many places. So yes, they will decide soon. And yes, we are going to continue our plans as normal with your planet. I know that we have made promises that we could not keep and we have learned a lesson from that. You see, even we learn lessons. But we are still confident that your people will uh, come around at some point. Okay, uh, thank you. You are welcome. Hi. 
Hello? Continue. I heard someone else talking. Someone else just started to talk, but I'm not sure who that was. After we do have, Kalik, we I hear have your voice. Kina. Okay, we have Kina, I believe. Yes, and uh, I'm going to have to read Kina's question. She's having some microphone issues. Um, she was asking if the Dark Cabal is still planning on faking an alien invasion using whatever form, Project Blue Beam, or, you know, whatever tricks they try to keep. As we can see, the Cabal has many different ideas of how they can uh, keep fear in charge of the human race. This is their greatest plan, is if there's great peer, fear, then the people can be manipulated more easily. You see, they would, be, they would seem as the great protector to those that are in fear. And if they can cause fear, they will. Now, there are many different ways. They have the terrorist attacks. They have these ideas about causing uh, false attacks all over the place to instill peer, fear in people's lives so they do not feel comfortable about living in the third dimension without being afraid. So yes, the Cabal will try to use as many different fear tactics as possible. This gives them a greater edge for manipulation. Okay. Whether they are able to do these things is another question. They are able to do many things, but to fake an alien attack would cost a great deal of money, and they're usually more frugal than that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some people are asking how we would know it's fake. I mean, there's hints and signs of a lot of their false flag attacks, but do you have any insight on? things to look out for, I yes. suppose. Uh, let me tell you this. Um, any attack right now, I, I think that you would understand as a group of people that if there was an alien attack right now, it would be a false sign. Now, the people would not know, but you would know because you understand that this would be the worst time for an alien attack. because. We are trying to make inroads to your governments so that we can work together to make you a part of the galaxy that help you to rise, to help you to move forward. A, a, an alien attack at this time would change the parameters of everything. And it would be absolutely false because no one no species in their right mind would try to attack at this time because they would be stopped by all the other species that are out here. There would be no way that they would be able to continue more than five minutes on an attack. Yeah. I do not see sense. that happening at all. Even a fake one would be stopped yeah yeah absolutely it's uh it's silly to think of but i know it's people are thinking but about it, it is it was an idea of the cabal it was correct i do not think that they will go through with it it's not likely but it would be stopped within mo minutes of and so why waste all that money yeah exactly all right, great. Well, thank you, Takur. Uh, we have a question next from Neil. Yeah, wow. Neil. Hey, hello, Takur. How are you? Greetings, Neil. Nice to be you again. Yeah, I'm very good. Okay, so I was wanting to ask about the meetings that you said are taking place in December. So, um, I, I didn't hear that. Sorry, I want to ask about the meetings, the government meetings in yes, December. Yes, they will be taking place at the end of December. We're thinking that the 21st will be the most likely start date, but it might start a day or two before that. 
because okay, usually they good. only give it three days and it lasts at least five. And okay. that would bring it to Christmas. And so we think that they will start earlier than that. Okay, so one thing I'm interested in is, uh, is Trump going to be at these meetings or is he going to be introduced into this? We do not know what the plans are for Trump at these meetings. We know that Clinton will be there because she has been at the last ones. But Trump, we are not sure. He is not a great believer or he has a great fear factor of aliens as well. But he will have to get used to us. So we okay. hope that he is there. Okay. Okay, and uh, what, what's going to be discussed at this meeting and, and what will I be what will I be talking about this time? Of course you'll be there and you will be talking, along with many of the other you, uh, many of the others of you. So, but they will be discussing many of the similar things, first contact, uh, site to site, but medical issues as well. These seem to take up a long period of time as it is one of the greatest inroads for site to site is medical problems. If we can get them to agree to bring, let us bring up those with medical problems first all over the world, not just their people, this will be the beginning of a site to site program. Okay, well, it'll be any discussion Otherwise than the... that. There are many other things. They complain about there's so many of us around in the solar system. They, com they complain about um, many, many things about us. But the thing is now they're starting to become more aware that we are not leaving and that they are going to have to get used to us and that they're eventually going to have to work with us. So they have worked with us to certain extents, but not to the extent that is helping themselves out in any way. Okay, and what about the ships? Is there going to be any discussion on the ships? The ships are always discussed. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, thank you very much, Tikar, and much love to you and everybody much else. Love. Me. And thank continue. You. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next we have, who came next? Free help uh, yep, no problem. It looks like Slava, actually, he was asking in the YouTube chat to Kerr, um, he had some questions about his Tiber children. He said, um, "Could would you be able to tell Slava anything about them? He would be happy to hear. Um, he's wondering if he has children which he doesn't already know about. He knows about eight so far, and he wants to visit them in the yes. near future. He has been visiting them. They have been visiting him. Um, they are all in good shape and are feeling well. Very talented, especially the oldest one. Um, and his mother's child as well is doing very well. We will speak to him. If he gets in touch with Jim, he, they can set up something. Um, he has done so much for the human colony. Jim will definitely speak to him for, uh, and let him know all about this. Yes, absolutely. And I will um, go ahead and say we're having lots of questions flooding in. So if people don't have their questions answered, please, guys, go to our humancolony.org site, and you can book a session with Jim. Um, if so you cannot you afford a session, please make that note on your requests and we will work something out with them. I have a quick question for Jakur, if I can. Jakur, hi, it's Karen. Um, something stuck in my mind that uh, Obama said when he was talking yeah. about Trump and he was saying that the job has a way of humbling you. And, yes, and so it does. he wasn't worried about Trump so much. And the pictures of Trump, the day that he went and sat with Obama, you saw somebody 
I believe, who was transformed. So I don't know what goes on in that meeting. And, it, and you saw the same with Obama when he met with Bush. And, and the same thing when Bush met with Clinton. You just, what, what happens in that meeting? Is that when they Let start tell talking you something. about real things? They, dis because, they discuss yeah. many things. And yeah. um, there are many things about the presidency that are not known to the public. The things yes. that are the things that have to be known that the people do not know are very frightening, are very horrendous in many senses. So, and also the awareness of aliens, of the awareness of all different kinds of things happening on your planet that are unspeakable. It is a very humbling job. It is a very humbling meeting because he thought he knew so much about what he could do for the people. When he re left that meeting, he realized that he had been spouting off a lot of things that could not possibly ever happen. Yes, it was very humbling for him. And yes, without the unity of the nation, which is his greatest concern at this time, he will be able to do little. Right. So is there any, is just, do you have any kind of prediction as to what's going to happen with the recounts and the electoral college? Is there a chance that it could shift and not be him? Coming no. Up? Okay. I do not think that it will shift. Okay. And, and, and let, one last thing. I, I had very much the distinct uh, impression, because I live in Europe, and I was watching the election. And when I went to bed, I was in one, uh, and I was watching up until I fell asleep, and I slept for about two hours. So you're talking about two to three in the morning. I um, have the impression that... I jumped into a different timeline in that shift, and I believe the whole country, the whole world did. And I, everyone is saying it, and I put it on my Facebook, and a lot of people who don't believe any of this stuff came back and said, yes, I believe that that's true. People really felt the world flipped in that way. Whether yes, it's, it did. There yeah. was a shift. Yeah. I could go into that, but you would, it is not something for everyone to know. Okay, no, it it's just a confirmation. That, it, it, it's something that was, that was done by a certain group of people, a certain group that was very powerful and able to do that, and it did change the future. Do you, do you, do you think that, that the fact that so many people, that most of us or all of us moved, is it important that we remember how things were so that we can shift it back or shift it forward in a, in a you positive way? You do not way? want to shift it. But no, you do not want this to change. Okay. What they did was they did not only change one thing, they changed several things. Yeah. And it made it for the better. So do not want for it to change back. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. You're you are welcome. Be at ease. You hear that these positive messages coming from many different species. That is because of this shift. They are aware of it as well. It may not seem like a good thing. However, in the end, it will be the best outcome possible. Yeah, possibly. Thank you so much and much love. I love you so much, Chikar. We love you as well and wish only the best for you. And I would like to add this. Grook McNear had nothing to do with this shift. Okay. Was it a destiny humanity kind of shift? Was that? I believe some, I believe those who created it felt that it was. Okay. But you shifted with us. Yes, I did not hear what you said. I said you shifted with us. Yes, we did. Thank you. Thanks for coming along. We need you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank we you. need you as well. 
Sheer had one last question, uh, I think, regarding this as well. Continue. Um, earlier this year, you said that one, two, or three things are supposed to happen. Is that one is the one that, that's supposed to bring the two others, the elections? There was one that said, one moment. There was one that said, all things will change. Do you remember that message? Yes. All things did. I'm aware of that, but there were some uh, beings that spoke about between one to two, three things that uh, could change. And, and the, they did. All of those three? All three. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, next Thank we had Brian, I believe. Are you okay, Takur? Are you going to stay with us, or, or are you, are you? Um... I am fine. Thank okay. you very much. I think next we have Brian. Hello, Takur. How are you, my friend? I am very well, thank you. Yes, this is Brian. Um, it is good to see you. Thank you, my friend. Um, I wanted to go into a little bit about the um, the uh, extraterrestrial energy. Um, around the planet at this moment. Um, I, I was just wondering, um, these alliances, the, they work together, um, uh, like the Ashtar Command, Grip um, are they are they starting to have formed different, different councils together which can aid the planet more, or how do they work together? Yes, when we go to the meeting at the end of the year with your governments, there are other councils that join us. We are not the only one that goes. Ashtar Command, the Council of Nine, the Octorian Councils, the Orion Councils, they are all part of this communication. Um, your planet realizes that they are vastly outnumbered and outweighed by the communities of space, but they are frightened to become part of it. And we're not sure why. I think that like some of the Pleiadian planets that chose no, not to become part of alliances, that they just want to stay neutral. But this will not happen with your planet. Your planet will eventually come around and be a great deal of help to the galaxy. Now, the councils meet far more often than just once or twice a year with your governments. These councils are also talking about how to do first contact, how to cut down on fatalities on your planet when certain events are going to happen, things of this nature. But they also discuss things of the galaxy and of the universe as well. You're not the only topic of conversation. So therefore, yes, many of these councils speak one to another and are in good relationships one with another. They may not have the same reasons and r rationales for doing things the way we do, but they have a great concern for the people of your planet. Yes, yes. I guess my other part is then, I, I'm starting to feel like humanity, even those in the government, is, is, their big, is one of their fears is that it's hard to, it's like they've done this so many times in other worlds and planets. It's, it's almost like it's, it's like in their cellular DNA that they have this like, oh God, we got to go through this again. You know, like this awakening or the, like they want to yeah. take a break from the rest of the universe. It, it, it's almost like. They, yes, but they, they cannot. Connect, but they cannot because they realize that they're all connected. So I, I see this, this dilemma sometimes that 
They want us to feel or stay separate as a species, but yet they don't realize the benefits of the galaxy. You see? Yes. I understand where your people are in many cases. Yeah, yeah. They feel that the change would be too great and that they would lose the, the trust of the people. They would lose the focus. They feel that mass rioting and things, that very negative things would happen if they were to give in. But you see just the opposite would come about eventually. Right, right. I understand. Much, much love to Kurt. Thank you very much, my friend. Much love. It is just the original transition that they fear. They fear that transition from uh, unity as one planet to a one of many in the soul in the uh, galaxy. They do not want to be one of many. They would rather be controlling of their planet. They want control control of their own space they do not want to be seen as one of many Understood. and if they become part of the galaxy they will feel one of many now i understand about how race on this planet how the separation of color how we you know we we put down one another or we're hard on each other over race yeah. and how it's even harder even to assume out there in the universe you have people with blue skin and red skin and just all different types of colors of the rainbow. There are more yeah. colors than you can imagine. <laughs> I, I can imagine. <laughs> can Thanks. you also imagine that they would probably <laughs> not be able to be higher than anybody else and they would actually Correct. have to fall in line. And the and so, union. so they see themselves as less than compared to the No, rest they, of the I think that Correct. they... Correct. They yeah. believe that they will be the one that will be prejudiced against. That's ah. karma. That... <laughs> I understood. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Because there are many that are much higher in intelligence, in understanding, wisdom, whatever. And so they will be the low person on the totem pole. And so they will be the one prejudiced against. So that's where the self-empowerment comes in. When they start to look within, they start to see the love for themselves. Then it raises the spirit and then they start to see themselves as equal. Yes. Understood. But they do not feel equal in the galaxy. I understand. All right. Much love to her. Thank you. Much love. But let me explain something to you. In God's eyes, no matter what the species, who the species are, he looks at us all as equals. Even the blue avians look at you as equals in the right to decide for yourself who you are. Or to get to govern yourselves and to be self uh, sustaining, so they know that you are equal, even though they may have greater and more established ways of dealing with government power and and technology. You are still an equal when it comes to your rights. Thank you. I, under I understand. Thank you, my friend. Be aware of that. We look at you as equals also. I have to admit, I did not at one time feel that way. But I do now. Having gotten to know the actual people and not just looking at a species, it is very different. When you get to learn who the people are in the species, you see the species in a different way. Yeah, you start to see that commonality in one another and in, in each being. And we see yeah. that we are more alike than I thought. Exactly. Understood. Thank you, my friend. That is heartwarming to Kerr. I love you so much. You <laughs> are a great heart. And sometimes it's misguided. But you see, I see great heart in even those that are misguided in some places. If the heart was to look at itself and understand its place 
in the world as what and who it really is, they would come to the understanding that they are part of the great divine and the great multitude of the galaxy. We have so much to look forward to. <laughs> um, and we are looking forward to you becoming part of it because then not only can we speak to you this way, but we can be in your homes, you can be in ours, and we can get to know each other's customs, ways, and, and celebrate things together, get to know each other in a more personal way, whereas we can be real friends and not friends from a distance. Yes, yes, it is going to be amazing. I know it's still in its infancy stage, but it's happening at an accelerated rate. So everybody, um, it's important to really focus on that, you know, focus on what you want to see and not what you don't want to see. Yes, um, if there was one thing that I wanted, would tell everyone in the world, if they were to see who I am, if they could see that I am an alien and they could see that what I look like and how, how I sound and everything, I would tell them, you are no greater than I am and I wish to be your friend and get to know you better. And that is the truth of the matter. I do not want to get to know you as a race, a species, or a world as much as I want to get to know you as individuals. Because then that is where I can find the most value in each of you. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question next from Kralik. Quick. Uh, yes. Hello, it's a Kerr. Greetings. Uh, on the on the topic of the leadership of, of Earth, um, I had a dream one time when looking back on it, I find it somewhat odd where I met the leaders of Earth, but I ended up uh, attacking them because I felt that they were holding back humanity and that the only way to properly free earth from their control was to make them leave their current life. Uh, I'm not, I'm not well, sure. I can, I can understand that thought process. However, if you look more closely, the only way to change humanity is from within. If you kill them, they will not, it will not proceed to have a greater existence, but others will become angry and their insides will turn dark against you because you have attacked them and shown hatred. And therefore, you will create more hatred. What must be done is you must find a way to get to the soul of those that are running your worlds and it must come from the inside. It cannot come from any other way. Okay, I thank you for that. You're welcome. I'd just like to add something you to that. understand that. that. Uh, yes, what did I you understand. Say? No, I just yes. said I'd like to add something to that. You know, we, we have to remember that everybody here, every soul here, plays a part in this journey forward and the people that are not doing what you think are doing it in in on, on a greater perspective in order to propel propel us forward to 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 you know uh, bring up in us the desire to change so be be careful what you want to destroy and choose for what you want but exactly. do it without causing harm because that's the lesson isn't it they're causing harm, yes. so why choose to cause more harm? Exactly. And there was a point when we were looking at your people that we thought, I thought to myself that perhaps if we were to destroy a certain group, that it would be a positive thing. But looking at it now, it would not have been. Destruction is just that, a negative act. And the only way to cause things to change 
in the truest light is from the in inside. If you cannot reach the inside, blowing up the outside does not work. Is there any other questions, or should I bring someone else? There was a comment uh, Johannes wanted to make quick, and then I do have a question for you to Kerr and some more. Yes. I hope that you can hear me fine. I have some problems with my signal. I can, yes. I hear you. That's true. Continue, yeah. Johannes. Well, I can hear you badly, but I hope that I can. That's, that's the point. Um, I want to come to uh, energy, a subject that my mother introduced me, and it's a very calm idea. It's a very calm emotion that you can carry. It's a light. It's yes. And it's very important for everyone to understand that we are doing everything right in that sense that we're doing everything and yes. to not put any extra pressure on yourself with your mission that you call which can lead to some kind of a self pressure that it can give you a feeling that you're not doing enough that you are doing enough doing enough you are doing exactly that what you are doing so let go of any mission because all the missions are done it's finished let go of that and relax everything is fine everything is exactly how it should be so relax and let go of the mission <sighs> Relax and let it out, let it go. Because we're here to stay calm, enjoying. The, the most important thing for you to remember is to be the example. You, that is, if you want to call that your mission, that is what it is. To be the example of light, goodness, calmness, no fear, but understanding, wisdom, acceptance. Your example is your greatest gift to the world. You agree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you must it does not matter all the things that you do because some people may think that you're doing it for to be noticed or for self-awareness or whatever but being who you are in the truest state being a loving good kind person and being genuine is the greatest gift that you can give to your planet And if you think about that, it is a very powerful gift indeed. Much love thank to you and thank you. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, Takur, I did have a quick question. Yes. Parts to an update with the colonies, um, with the progress, yes. with what's happening, um, please let us know. We are all extremely interested to hear. Uh, the update to the colonies, there's six, sub, six colonies. The sixth is the healing colony. The curriculum for the galactic healing is coming from that area. A lot of experimentation, a lot of learning, a lot of teaching has been given there. And a lot of healing, of course. And those things that are that work best for humanity will be brought forth. 
in a galactic Reiki or galactic healing, energy healing class. We do not want to call it a Reiki class because it is not going to be all of Reiki uh, fundamentals. It will be uh, galactic in nature. And those only those things that genuinely affect and help humanity. Now, there are other different kinds of healing modalities coming forth, and very good ones that move with the energies of your planet, and they will be brought forth as well. So stay tuned for greater healing energies. Okay, that's a good thing to stay tuned for. All right, thank you. Um, next up, we have a question um, I have to read her question, so Get I'm wife. sorry, I lost it here. <laughs> um, that is all right. Is there any okay. other questions out there? Uh, her question is, if you're able to give her any messages and if there will be more opportunities for her where she's currently living um, with what she should do on earth or if she should move locations. Who is this we're speaking about? Uh, this is Jasmina. Jasmina. Yes. One moment. I believe that she feels that she is not in the right place to use her gifts. Yeti Wakaro, one moment. Yes. There is a thought of travel. I am not sure exactly how this connects with her, but uh, the lapis lazuli called me, called me, and that is a stone of travel. I do not have any other messages for her at this time, but there is travel in her future, yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Tikar. Um, we have a question from Amran. Uh, Amran would like to know, he says, Hello, Tikar, can you give me any message on my work on the colonies and my hybrid children? <laughs> yes, you work in, actually, you have been to Colony 3, which is the filmmaking area. They interviewed you a couple times because of your interest in that sort of thing, and your stories were very good and helpful for those that would want to start to speak or introduce themselves to other aliens you you have some interesting insights into that also you were on the channeling class in on the fourth colony as well and also colony one your hybrid child you have one or two i have to get with Sengi about that. Uh, there are so many hybrid childrens, I cannot keep them all straight. But yeah, I know that you at least have two. A boy and a girl, and one of them is a Lyran, and the other one is a Pleiadian. There may be more than that. They are doing well. The the Lyran is very interested in languages, history, and tradition, studying traditions, literatures, and things of that from Earth and other planets. That is all I got so far. Okay, thank you so much. All right, we have a question from Christine. Christine, can you unmute? Christine. Greetings. Um, Greetings. I'd like to know um, if I can have a um, download of Yael 
DNA so that I can, um, would it improve my healing or is it the next step towards my working with animals and people? You, you would help you. Uh, let me tell you why. I'm not sure why you chose you, Yil, but you, that is a very good choice for you. You, Yil, will help you because it is a very human alien type. 97.7 or 8% of humanity is like you, Yil, in many ways, DNA wise. And so you will be able to heal greater with a you, Yil DNA. However, especially with animals because they are a very animal oriented species they do like to work with animals they do like to work with uh species that are less fortunate than they are and so yes it will help okay um I, in the past yes. i've been making requests for um for um, an enhancement DNA from them, and I don't know if I've been heard or if I'm doing it right, or maybe I'm just not ready for it. Actually, they have given you a little bit of, they have given you some DNA from the UGIL for your arthritis. Um, well, it's but they will <laughs> give you some more. In the they will give you more of that in the future. They will give you it upwards of 8%. Thank you. What you are our thoughts or from yet you give you tips. I am uh, setting it up with Sengi now. Thank you. Much love. Much love to you, Christine. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we have a question next from Bianca. Um, I have to read her question. Um, Bianca is asking, I got a Lemurian crystal sphere last night. I'm expecting more Lemurian soon. Do you have any suggestions on how I should use them or what I should know from them? And are there any messages for me? The Lemurian crystals have a great deal of energy for you. Put them together. Work with them as a community if you will and let them show you uh, their their side of the personality which is very intellectual and mathematical they will bring about to you some thought processes about the Lemurian people when they were alive this will help you in your quest for the future you are very binary in your thought processes. I do not know what that means exactly, but that is what they're telling me. But keep these crystals together because they are going to be a community and they will work together and they will be a powerful friend to you. What did you say? Did you have a thought process on that? I know you did. Yes? You can say it if you wish. Yes. There is another thought process here about that as well. I don't know where to start. The, uh, the Lemurian crystals are... Continue. His mind is swirling. The way they connect with your heart and your higher selves to bring in divine right order to help you sort what is important for you and important for all it's engaging in the law of one if that helps ah, yes thank you for that clarity that added to what i had to say keep them using them as a community but they are for help with the higher self and that and the the 
what he Law said. Yeah. Law of one. Yes. I wanted to say something a little different, but it wasn't correct. But um, go with that. I heard his thought on that as I was sitting here. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Um, L, we have a question from L. Are you able to unmute? L, how are you? Yeah, chop once. Continue, L. Um, I'm not sure if she stepped away for a moment. We can move back to her. Um, we had a question from somebody on the YouTube chat who goes by the name M Knows. M Knows is asking if you could elaborate on what their DNA is. Ah. I think they have some idea. The first okay. thing that came directly to me was there is a little gray in them, about 4%, but there's other things there. There's some Fendorian, which is unusual, but very, very nice, working with the gray there, which is about also 4%. The Pleiadian is of the smaller Pleiadian groups, small blue Pleiadian, very, um, that's the, their happy spot is the blue Pleiadian. There's about 2%, 2.5% there. And there's, that is some of their DNA makeup. And um, every now and then they, they tap into that really joyful part of the blue Pleiadian. I'm not sure if they're getting, if they're agreeing with what I have to say, but this is what I'm being told. Okay, interesting. Um, thank you. Uh, M Nose was also asking if you would be able to comment on, um, let's see, if the site to site healings via hologram will be approved. If there's a way this for is that something to happen. Be, yes, this is something that will be of a great interest for us to see. Um, the next couple meetings with your people will be strongly about healing those that really need it on your planet that um that could start a uh site to site program and we are hoping that it is we are able to convince them that uh he, our healing program is not just for those in politics, but for those of the earth that really need some help and that do believe and would like to be healed. Okay, that is very, very exciting. Um, this is one of, the four, one of the pushes that we have for the next couple meetings. We know that it won't be approved this, this meeting. We already know that, but we will spend much time talking about it. But we are hoping for perhaps the June or July meeting. Yes, I feel like anything is possible at this point. So that's well, wonderful. Right now we know that there are so many things going on with several of the major com countries that it probably won't be approved this time, but we're keeping our hopes high. Yes, me too. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question next from Omar, who would like to ask, he says, if perspective perceptions are not at fault or thoughts as well, misunderstood interpretations or translations seed intention, or is it directed by higher spiritual order of reality management? All right. I believe that I this that makes has sense. to do with how messages come through, how information gets through to your people. Is that how you see it? Uh, because yes. perception, because Omar, in, in the way of this, your planet, the person that is bringing the message through has a perception and a view of the message that is coming through them. Many times they become part of it. 
if they were to leave themselves out of that message or perception of what is being trying to say, a greater truth would arrive in a greater value. Now, the very fact that some people have to be used for some of these messages and are slanted in their belief systems, they bring through the messages with the slant of their perception, with their belief, and change the truth of the message at times. Now, that is not the intention of negativity. They are not intending to be negative. They are intending to bring it through as truthfully as they can. However, as it's coming through their belief filter, they cannot help but change the message slightly to make it incorrect. Now, many times the being or spirit that is speaking the message that is being slanted cannot hear what is being actually said. They are hearing what they say and what is meant to be said. But if they were able to hear also what was said, it would be very confusing. There would be there's their thoughts, the translation coming out, and it would be just a, mon a jumble of words. So they, they, their per perspective is that they give the message as clear as possible and pray that it comes out in the most effective way without any interference. But many times, and I do say many, many times perception and belief systems change that message as it's coming out and it is not exactly as it was intended from the original speaker does that make sense to you yeah to wow yes, unfortunately sure. it is not an intention a negative intention at all it is that it is affected by the channel itself Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Um, we have a question next from Elle. I think she has her microphone working. Wonderful. Greetings, Elle. No, cut out. What's your high job? We are on foot. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Of course. In the astral, you can interact in a different way. In the third dimension, your example is what's important and how you are treating them as an equal and bringing their perspective uh, and understanding that you respect their what they think, even though you are not truly connected to what, to what they are saying. In the astral, you can be a little bit more um, extract and let them know exactly how you feel and they can understand it in a greater way. Does this make sense to you? And so therefore, you've done a great thing. Make sure that you keep your relationships very positive when you're trying to express these thoughts because your perspective your example is the most important thing there they will see that you are respecting them not talking down to them and are of a higher 
energy level than they are. It has been a while. Get your watch up. A message for you would be this. Continue to pursue your astral work. You, it is doing a great job. You can see changes in these people. Can you not? And they will continue to change and continue to raise your example because you are one of the greats. You have many things that you teach on the colonies. We have used you extensively in many ways. Especially in the diet and health and exercise area, you've helped a multitude of people. Also, you have also helped many with their thought processes about how to be more disciplined. Thank you for this. Tepet is, right, Tepet is right here beside me. Do you want to speak to him? One moment. I will have him speak to you. One moment. Greetings, I am Tepa. Hello. Much love to you. Yes. I am still continuing to monitor and learn more about human physiology and medi medicine. We have been helping many. I have now a group of Fandorians that have uh, been my assistants and a few others. Not all, they are not all Fandorians. There is two year girl and but I do have a group now that are all learning the medical works of the people of Earth. We are getting more proficient in understanding, especially hormones and enzymes in the females and males, because we've discovered that uh, we have been able to help females a little bit more than we've been able to help males, and that is because. We are close, more closely related to the enzymes and hormones in their systems than we are it to the males. So using that information to build greater information on how to help all of Earth. So we have helped with headaches, backaches, and many um, we've helped with hormone injections with females who have uh, had uh, problems adjusting, and so we are moving forward. We have now had some uh, experiences with the thyroid and with uh, the lungs and some other things, and so we continue to move forward and understand the human physiology. It is close to you yield physiology, but like I said, the hormones and the enzymes are different. So this makes for uh, an entirely different kind of medicine because once those things are a little off, you, ha you have to change things. So um, we are here to do our best. We are learning a lot. And my assistants are going to become doctors of their own. Very much. And we, we support you as well. Much love. Hi, Tepe. Thank you for stopping in. I was going to ask for you. Um, this is great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we ha I have, have a few more questions. Well, thank you very much. I do not speak to the world like uh, Tepe does because she is the one that has more time. I do not have as much time to speak to humanity as she does. But in a situation of this nature, I will be happy to speak to you 
and happy to bring any information that you may need at this point to the Earth. That is so kind of you. We appreciate it. We have a few more questions left. People are just flooding in with questions. So um, our next question is from Peter. It's Peter Pitter. I, I'm going to say Peter. Uh, Peter Wander Clydeson, who is asking, um, what connection does he have with the wait excuse me he says what connection one has with their ancestors yes and um do you have with your ancestors yeah you i have, think it's a general question i think that your ancestors are in your lives in some ways they they are where you get your dna from in many cases unless it comes from an outside source but if your um, ancestors had alien dna then it will be passed down to you also um, in many cases personality traits as well but the thing is about that is that when you go to the oversoul you 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 are also have your own personality traits and your own soul and all these things but many of these overlap because of all the lessons that you've learned throughout your lives so it is a difficult uh answer because i'm stumbling all over the words here but <laughs> you that there is a relationship with your ancestry and your present day life and also there is uh, star seeds. Your ancestry may not all be from Earth. Some of your ancestry may be from other worlds. So you have to keep that in mind. Many of you experience a disconnect when you come to the third dimension because your last life was somewhere else. And so you do not feel like you belong here, but yet you, you somehow learn to fit in or you somehow learn that your past life was not on earth and that there are reasons for the way you feel in this particular lifetime but your ancestry is in, is important but it is also that there is ancestry off this planet for you as well okay yeah interesting he um he was wondering up to what point do our ancestors interact with our reality and the themes chosen for our existence that is a good question it is different in each family line so that is a, that is a question of relativity meaning that it's relative to where they went in their lives in in their other worldly lives compared to where they came came back to the human lives so that it, there is some cutoff points there yes does that make sense to you yeah yeah very interesting okay can i add something just real quick um yeah within within the indigenous people they never think of doing anything without first honoring their their ancestors and having okay. that connection and that's one of the things that as humanity a, a lot of us have lost is that connectivity with our ancestors and you know because that's really just us yeah. moving forward through time absolutely and so to to have that connection is a is a very good thing and many cultures the indigenous cultures never think of embarking on anything without first uh, having oh yes honoring of those there are many species that call on their that the history of their species is one of the most important things for their culture and tradition they have memories and tell tales of, of those people in their family and have relics and jewelry and things of this nature that were passed down through generations so that they can bring those memories to life and give some kind of uh, soli uh solidity to them some kind of uh truth to them that is very beautiful and accurate
Well, I think that I must go. Oh, okay. okay have a that. wonderful day, and I will talk to you some other time. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. But there are some things that must be looked into. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Namaste. Namaste. I have returned. I believe that you are almost out of time here. Yes. Hi, Takur. Yeah, we had just a few more questions. Um, are you able to stay a little bit longer? Yes, a few more minutes, if you will. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, so moving forward then, um, our next question, um, I'm waiting for Kina. Um, so our next question is V. V, are you able to speak up? Um, she All might right. have stepped away. I'm sorry. Um, so other than V, we have a question from a day. Um, a day is asking, she said she'd like to know why she's been so up and down with emotions for the past few months and if it's not because it's not normal to her and old wounds are reopening. Yes, I understand that. It is the and just recently you went through a very strong portion of the fourth dimensional energy anomaly where the energies were moving very very quickly and it lasted for about seven or eight days i'm not sure but many people were very during this period of time up and down a lot and uh memories were being uh, all moved around in their heads and they were remembering it remembering things actually differently than they actually occurred at times because they were actually bouncing off of other timelines so be aware that that has calmed down um, <clears throat> at this point and that things should move forward very I mean you just got over that this Monday or yes this Monday and um, so things should start calming down so but yes many things were happening with that particular energy it was uh very active and very effective to human psychology okay thank you all right um v does your microphone work now yes i'm so sorry about that that's okay not a problem my my question is um I feel that it's really important for people to start to uh, connect and work with crystals. Um, I have actually opened a page to start a crystal exchange. I just okay. want to know if they have any information on whether I am doing it right or what I should be doing it, um, what I should be doing to perfect it or to um, make it more accessible so that more people could be involved. The one thing that would help, I'm not sure if, I have not looked at your page, but one thing that you can do will be to color coordinate your gems and stones because someone will resonate with the color that they need because of chakra needs or because of needs within their lifetime. And if you have them in a beautiful color array that they are all matched up together, they will find a strong attraction to the entire collection. Um, I do not because I'm just getting started, but that is a wonderful idea that I will definitely make sure that I do it. Um, Crystal, color you, thank you for doing this. Crystals can make a great deal of difference. Intention on your crystals and stones and empowering them to help 
a, a purpose is very beautiful. And when and I measure put I mentioned putting them into a color spectrum so that people will see the different energies that come from the different colors. And this will help to move forward their belief in the use of them. That's so beautiful. Um, I have a second question, if possible. Um, yeah. I also feel quite guided to do spiritual coaching yes. um, and counseling. Um, any messages for me on how I should proceed or just any general message on what my next step should be in my purpose? Yes. Take an inward look at yourself and where your spirituality is. Your to bring to the world and what the, your purpose is for your teaching of spirituality and understanding. Make sure that you are pure in your thought processes. I believe that you are. But make sure that as you move out in your spiritual teachings that everything resonates with you. And that your stones help you with this spiritual teaching as well. For they are highly attuned to your spiritual thought process. Yes, actually when I do readings, I always make sure that I have at least three or four crystals that, um, and I change them um, per person almost sometimes, um, so that I can... Which, like, which is your most powerful stone? Um... There is so many. I have one quartz crystal that had actually started to um, crack and change inside. Um, as I've had it, I've had it for probably three years. I think it's my most powerful. Yes. I was thinking it might even be a rose quartz. But I have, I have one of those two, a very tall wand, yes. Yes, it's a very powerful stone. This one is... Um, actually gives you much information about the heart. So make sure you use them in tandem one with another. Thank you so much. Thank you. That helped me so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a, thank you. Much love. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Jody next um, regarding the issues at Standing Rock. The, um, the whole um, issue with that, she's asking if we can have any perspective from you or Gurk Bittnir, and if we're able to um, request any further assistance from angels, our extraterrestrial friends. And what is happening at Standing Rock? Um, the issue with the, the pipeline, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh Oh, yes, we are aware. Native Americans, yes. It is an issue of the heart, really, because you must understand that the peoples have a reason for how they feel. Of course, they want business as usual, but business will not be as usual for here. It will be a matter of the heart with those that see it as a different kind of situation. We will help with this. We will help to bring understanding to those that are pushing forward in the wrong way, in some ways, although they do not see it as the wrong way, with their understanding of this situation. I cannot tell you that there is an answer yet. But I can only tell you that it is a matter of free will with those people, with the peoples that are involved. And a matter of free will is just that. It will be decided by your people. But we will try to help to guide them in the right direction. <laughs> Thank you, Takur. <laughs> Um, I remember recently Grindel uh, did comment in a Saturday webinar about how there's actually a lot more to the story, of course, go figure, than 
And we've been told and like um, there was a huge issue that came up where it's it sounded like it was pretty much impossible for them to do it. So um, my question then is, is, is that true? I mean, wouldn't this have already stopped if it were really well, that it, impossible? It's not that it's impossible, but it is improbable. Yeah, like financially and even, so, right? Even though improbable, there are those that are very stubborn and would have their will done no matter what. Yeah. Okay. But I will not go into that. There is a lot more to it than you know. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we have a question next from Wendy. Wendy, are you able to unmute? Thank you, Wendy. Does it have something to do with what? Oh, yes. You see, okay, let me, let me explain something about the downloads of languages. They actually seem to be a catalyst for a lot more than just languages. They seem to be a catalyst to open up other gates and other places in the brain for spirituality, for channeling, for other gifts. They seem to touch upon areas in the human mind that are not yet open, and but are really welcome to be open at this period of time. And so, yes, the fourth dimensional energy is bringing that interest to the human peoples. And they know that they have meaning when they speak these languages. They may not understand what they are saying, but they realize their intention is positive. And say, so they move in that direction. Yes. It opens these things up. It makes them stronger. It makes them more. It, it actually works on the belief systems. Once they are able to speak the language, it opens the belief systems for other areas. Does that make sense for you? Yes, I under, that is correct. It opens up the belief system so you can utilize more of the brain so that more of the brain can be accessed with the fourth dimensional energy because you believe you can do these things. You believe that it exists and you want to experience it. And that is part of what it does. The reason for greater interest in some than others is because they seem familiar to them. It seems like a familiarity. These languages seem all like they've spoken them before, or they've heard them before, or they've experienced something with them before. So, yes. Sometimes it does. Because you may inherit the language of your star seed. And in fact, you may want or ask for that language to be the download. 
and then your star seed will actually become more aware of you and in many cases get in touch with you Yes, I understand. Your direction is to learn from them, with them, and pass this information on. But they have not given you anything to pass on. Well, they have, but not anything that you are thinking that is uh, incredibly useful, but they will. No, I am good. With, I am good with where you are, and I see what you are meaning. But more languages and more people will be coming to you because you have the gift uh, that they seek. I did not hear that about the children on the colonies. Oh, of course. There's three planets now that you go to. Era, Palana, and Maya. P-E-L-A-N-A -A is the third of the hybrid planets. Yes. I must go now. I love you very much, and I'm sorry if I cannot answer any more questions, but it is time for me to go. We appreciate you joining us, Dekur, and we love you so much. Please pass our regards to Gert Pitnir. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste. Hello? Ooh. Hey. Hello, Jim. Hello. Hi, Jim. Thank you. It's amazing. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope a lot of good information was brought. Oh, yes. yes it really so was. Too. That that was incredible. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, oh, thank you, everybody, for being patient. We had so many questions today. I'm sorry to those whose questions weren't able to be asked. Um, please do um, book a session with Jim, a private session, if you have personal questions. He is amazing. I can vouch firsthand for him. So, um, and we have many, so many channelers in this amazing channeling community. So yes, we're never running out of options. Were awesome. Um, Karen, oh, I mean, there's so many of you out there. Yes, it just keeps expanding. It's so exciting. Um, and, uh, I'd, I'd like to hear from Kim again soon. Um, I wrote her a note to Naster. When is the soonest she can do a, a webinar? But I haven't heard back yet. So, yeah, we might have to um, plan something with her time zone. So, if we end up doing a webinar with her, we might have to change just for that weekend the time or yes. something. We'll figure it out. Um, so that would be a special. A special of course, edition. we will. <laughs> Um, so with that said, does anybody have any final closing comments? We can um, end with some closing blessings and then be yeah. all set. Closing blessing? Ble blessing? <laughs> blessing? I just want to add into, into this. I want to encourage everybody to, to join for an idea. For us to connect, to uh, start off a hangout with only speaking our soul languages and we will connect our spirits because uh, I experienced last time we came together I experienced some, something so unexplainable that I just want to encourage 
more people to join and we will do blessings we will talk and we will have fun so uh, whenever <coughs> Excellent. Yes, Johannes, we have um, lang light language, uh, galactic language hangouts that are incoming. They are going to be scheduled on a regular basis, and it's going to be free for all so that people can enjoy speaking their, from their soul. Um, so uh, we'll also be posting those on the Human Colony events pages. So again, stay tuned on humancolony.org to the um, calendar. And uh, so with that said, I think it's time for um, some blessings. Um, I will start, then whoever would like to go next, please follow up, and then let's close up for today. Okay. I'd like to go too as well, so I'll go after you. Oh, yay. Okay. Wonderful, Karen, thank you. Okay. We can hardly contain our joy. It is a beautiful and wonderful day. There has been so, so much information passed, and we are filled with joy that you are listening to the ears of the universe through the ears of the universe and we are part of the voice that is speaking to you and we are glad to be with you much love much love much love oh that's so much fun <laughs> okay karen mashila turya pasitika defarama Lia Satko Bashi Aliaka Dora Mayakasi Diarapati Kola Yamadala Yashanta Kosola Yapatila Kopo Yamasha Tisa. Ah, the light is more dense than rain at times, and we want you to flood over with it. The love and the joy are with you and will continue to be your guide and Make your footsteps bright and clear. Much love to you. Thank you. Much love. Is that a galactic language? That's a baby. I am baby. Galactic baby. Galactic baby. Galactic baby language. <laughs> Aww. Anybody else? I want to go. I want to go. Okay, go ahead. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Riania, Wahiani, Mahiawa, Yania, Chiawane, Wahiawi, no, 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 still fall upon you let yourself move within them so that you can become acquainted with us in our sensational senses and not only our physical beings but in our emotional gratitudes and emotional outpourings we are being ourselves so that you might know ourselves in a way that is totally energetic at this time. So reach out and let us feel each other in the sensation of the waves of the universe and the frequencies of what are, is happening in your densities. Woo. 
Shili okoto noa Eliata Isile okoroto Ini akatea Shala to kua Iana Isi okoto kua talia Nia sakale nia shei koto kua ki Noso to toa Diki go toa Ilian to toa we are happy for you. Your meaning and existence mean something to us that is important. And we are glad that you are existing so well. We pray that nothing happens to you and we send protection in the form of energy and prayers. Our hands are reaching out and we can hardly wait until that day when we can hold your hands in ours. Oh, that was cool. Alrighty then. <laughs> there are wonders in the universe that you have not yet discovered but to us you are one of the greatest wonders of all the way that you have become self-aware, the way that you are moving forward, the way that things have transpired in your density and in your world have been like with no other world that we have ever witnessed or focused upon. So therefore, we bring our blessings to you, we bring our awareness to you, and we reach out, as others have said, to hold your hands. But now let us be in a time where our energies combine together so that your success is determined and is true and that nothing can stop you from moving into the place in the world galaxy that you belong. Our universe is filled with great things. We would love to share that with you. Be our neighbor, be our guests, and be with us now. Yes. Ulia Lara, Tia Lala Lua, Salalot Tutula Liata, Nada la Hula Taliata Tawaratia, Lola Riata Lala, Ula Lala Tisquala Riata Lala, Tola Lalo, Ola, Tawara Ladiata. Hm. Spatial anomalies that we think of as important. But nothing as important as you has come along in many millennia. We see that you are a hope for the future, a hope for all the things to come, and we extend a great amount of energy to you to continue with this work. We are happy that we are with you. This understanding of perception. So now let us perceive one another in friendship. Amazing. Thank you. One moment. Go ahead. 
yasha ania ate he ali kata isana nia ke ke ha si dia ya itana o ya kanta ya isha ali a kavasea ania ta sea o sanaria kanta ha al makata setia ania ka hmm many things are becoming visible that were once invisible energies that once we thought non-existent we now have been able to find and on your planet there are things there that have not been seen in the entire universe some originalities that are there for you and for us to share this is an exciting period this is a time for great joy let us move together and be as one always Oh. Okay. Yeah, you rock. <laughs> oh, <ways. laughs> the baby agrees. But baby wants to talk in galactic languages. <laughs> well, I have to let you go because I supposedly have a 1:30 uh, channel session. So. Oh, all right, Joe. <laughs> okay, I will see if that. I'm not sure. I've never. Uh, this was this session was made through someone else, so I'm not sure if it will come about. But we'll see. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Much Bye. Love, Bye for oh, now. Love you. Take care, and um, I'll see you soon. I think that I'll be here next week as well, and then I'll take a, a week off after that. So. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jim. Oh, super! Great news. Okay. Tom. Right. Much love. Thank you. Much love. And with that, we will end this broadcast. So thank you everybody for joining. We love you all so much and stay tuned. Oh, thank you, Karen. Yes, I am every Tuesday. Yeah. Thank you, Karen and Bree. You can go to Pyramid One Network. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the show is about oneness. So fantastic. Sure. Our show are always good thank you the shows are always very good thank you Bree. we Bye -bye. did we had, a, we had a great one <laughs> bye jim love you bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye now bye-bye <laughs> okay all right for reals for reals um gonna end the broadcast but Mama. I'm going to say again, I love everybody. We all have so much support. Please never think that you're alone. There's so much more out there than we can even perceive or comprehend, and things are amazing. So, blessings. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Good night. <laughs>